The conditions are rather juicingtons. Hey, did you get a good night's sleep last night? You know, I I fell asleep pretty well. Yeah. I kept waking up in the middle of the night. I kept hearing really weird sounds. It sounded like a dog was dying. <laughs> Can you give me like a, an example of what it was like? Like that, just oh. over and over again. And I, I was delirious and I was like, what is going on? Is somebody getting murdered right now? <laughs> Actually, I was trying to make a, a romantic overture to you, but you weren't listening. That was you? Oh, yeah. How did those noises come from, from you? <laughs> well, you know, I am a, I am a manly man. Manly men snore. Oh, absolutely, yeah. and and more. All right. Do I need to learn how to snore? Well, clearly, because uh, I didn't hear you snoring last night. I can teach you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The All master right. class will begin tonight. Hey, I can snore. Okay, oh, yeah? buddy. Yeah. 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 I can. I can snore. All right. We'll see. Besides the birth of a dinosaur, well, <laughs> what else? Uh, what else, what else did you hear? The, the sound of nature? I think I know what you mean. <laughs> Today, we were headed to the beautiful Oregon coast. After last night's failed shoot at Crater Lake, we made sure to arrive nice and early. What is your prediction for how many cars will be at this next car park that we're stopping at? Three. You're guessing three? I'm guessing three. I'm gonna guess 12. You're gonna guess 12 cars? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sticking with three. All right. Oh, look at that, mate. Two cars. I, yeah, two cars, you won. I won? Yeah. What do I win? Punch in the face. Just look at this business. Oh, I am rather excited about this. Who would have thought? that that forecast was accurate. We had such doubts, we were wrong. And I'm glad that we were wrong. It, it's gorgeous right now. This is spectacular. Should we get down there and get some exposures? I think so. How many times am I gonna say that in this video? A <sighs> hundred. One of my favorite things to do is location scouting. Just simply getting out in nature, even if I don't take a single image, is reward in itself, especially somewhere that's completely new to me. And as always, like a true professional, I put safety first. Whenever hiking through a forest of poison oak, it's absolutely vital that you wear the appropriate footwear. This part of the Oregon coast has been on my bucket list for years and for the very first time during my travels it looked like the weather was finally cooperating and don't let my cool demeanor fool you there I was as giddy as a schoolgirl you see there's something about sea stacks that really captures my imagination maybe it's their stubborn resilience against the tides of millennia sculpted like clay by the artful pounding of those Pacific waves. Maybe it's just their sheer timelessness, both humbling and awe-inspiring. If I could capture an image that told the story of that timelessness rendered insignificant under the gaze of the Milky Way, I'd be a very happy photo tripper. So when we got here, uh, when we first arrived, the first thing that I, I said to Mike is that I'd love to get down onto the beach and he said there isn't access from here, but further down uh, we can get access to just where those two massive sea stacks are. And if, if, I, if I can get down there, I reckon I could get a pretty epic composition of those two big stacks kind of jutting up into the sky. And if this sky lights up, if these clouds light up like I hope they might do, that could be an absolutely epic shot. We'll see. All right, there's usually little lights on the camera that'll shine into the foreground uh, when you're taking your pictures and you can tape all those lights up with some tape, with some gaffer tape. It's also helpful if something breaks and you just need a quick 
tape job to make it work. Um, and then of course, especially with these Sonys, uh, you can do it in the settings and make it go just to the viewfinder or you can just throw a little piece of tape over the viewfinder and then it'll stop that uh, LCD screen from shining on well, your foreground. It's, as well. it's worth mentioning as well that if you don't wanna be the least popular person at a location, that's another reason why you would want to tape up and cover anything on your camera that's going to emit a red light because that will destroy somebody else's shot if they're doing a long exposure and you will quickly become a social outcast if you have that red light on. Another thing about the headlamp as well is, I mean, yeah, it's true that you don't necessarily need to have any particular uh, kind of strength of headlamp just to get around. But if you do want to do a bit of light painting, mm. I would recommend something with about 300 lumens, and that'll be a very, very bright light that you can, you can do light painting from a distance and get some really nice soft directional light the further away you get from a subject to mimic, you know, moonlight or, or sunlight even. So it's a dual purpose thing as a headlamp. It'll keep you safe and it'll help with your creativity. And if you keep away from the red light, you'll be popular. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Coming soon, we're proud to announce Photo Tripper and Michael Shane Bloom put together Milky Way Made Easy. This is an online photography course that features practical tutorials, both shooting in the field and post-processing. We'll talk about the gear that you need and the camera settings that get you the best Milky Way images possible. We'll show you how to do twilight blends and even star trails and much, much more. Take advantage of early bird pricing by joining the mailing list there's a link in the description below okay back to the vlog this was shaping up to be a very productive day and we still had a bit of time to check out another location before making a final decision on where to set up our sunset and Milky Way shoots. So we headed a few miles south to a spot that Mike wanted to show me. And I was trying hard not to let my expectations get the better of me, lest I set myself up for disappointment. Come on, Mike, I can't wait, let's get moving. Hiking at sea level is just, it's just a wonderful luxury. Last night we were hiking up at Crater Lake. Do you know what the elevation is, Mike? Yeah. It's gotta be at least 6,000. 6,000 feet. Oh. I have no idea though. Anyway, it was miserable. And the reason why I didn't film any of that footage is because I sounded like some sort of asthmatic bagpipes. As my hungry eyes took in this majestic scenery, my excitement was reaching photogasmic levels. We climbed out onto this sketchy cliff worn smooth by the hiking boots of brave or stupid photographers like ourselves to behold one of the most impressive ocean vistas I've ever seen. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, sorry about that. Compositional options at this second location are, are phenomenal. All of the best compositions that feature the sea stacks line up just perfectly with where I predict that the Milky Way is going to be, kind of in the south southwest. And with foreground like this, you, you just can't go wrong. And so, what I'm going to go for, I reckon, is a twilight blend where I'll take a shot during blue hour and then keep the camera completely still and wait for the Milky Way to pop up and then take another shot with the stars in the shot and then blend those two together. So I really love the scene that I've got here. These sea stacks are just so impressive but I'm finding that even at 16 millimeter, it's just not wide enough. What I really needed for this job was a 14 millimeter lens, but I didn't bring one. So I'm gonna to have to be clever and try and fit a delicious composition, which will hopefully fit the Milky Way in as well at 16 millimeter. And it is gonna be a challenge. 16 millimeter just wasn't cutting it. And all I really wanted to do was go back to that first cliff view. Okay, I've come back to this overlook because it is such an easy composition, especially for the Milky Way. So here's my plan. We'll see if this works out. I've got my 
almost blue hour exposure. So I've focused on the sea stack trees here and I've done a range of exposures ranging from 6 seconds to 15 seconds and basically what my goal is with this is to get as much image quality as I can but still get what would appear to be a very very long exposure on the water kind of like what you would end up with if you were shooting let's say a 20 or a 30 second exposure while the Milky Way was up and the purpose for this is to get hardly any noise and a lot of image clarity but still get similar motion and what I'm going to do when I've got that shot, which I've just shot now, is keep this camera exactly in this position. The goal is to not move it at all. Now that I've got those shots, I'm going to wait for the car to pop up, completely change all of my settings, focus on a star and get that Milky Way shot. And then the plan is to blend the two together in Photoshop so that I can get the best of both worlds. Well, you know what they say about best laid plans. We waited and we waited some more. So let me show you my lovely Milky Way shot. Do you like it? What's that? You can't see any stars? No, neither could we. The clear night that was forecast turned into a completely socked in cloud fest. And while I still think this image has a lovely ethereal beauty, I was failing badly. I was still yet to capture a Milky Way image that was worthy of this course we were supposed to be creating. I mean, how can I teach Milky Way photography if I can't even see it? But don't get me wrong though, I knew I was lucky to have captured this image. And I do actually love the gloomy atmosphere and even that weird light pollution that you can see in the distance. All we could do was suck it up and hope for better conditions tomorrow. I see bits of blue sky. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> I've just got this, uh, I've just got a... Ghirardelli chocolate. You know the Ghirardelli factory thing is uh, by my house in San Francisco. Is it good? I've never had these. It's fine. Uh, I don't want just fine. I don't, okay, it's, it's, fine. It, it's gonna be good. You're gonna, you're well, no, if it's crap, just let me know. Not terrible. You want one? Nah, I'm alright. Not bad. Uh, it's more than I just don't want chocolate right now, to be honest. What? Why wouldn't you ever want chocolate at all times? What's wrong with you? You don't like chocolate? I like chocolate. It's fine. But not at all times. <laughs> <laughs> well, why would you do that? Like when I'm sleeping, I just need to be gnawing <laughs> on a bit of cocoa. <laughs> when you were sleeping last night. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't deliver it. Feels good. Is it recording? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> when you were sleeping last night, you were not. <laughs> I can't put that in my video. Oh my god. <laughs> I get it. It's supposed to be a.